Now we will going to continue in this tutorial with the same float property that we applied in the last tutorial. However, we will going to make this um, uh, property appear a little bit more better than what we did in the last tutorial. So in the last tutorial, we were able to wrap around the paragraph. So the paragraph was wrapping around this portion which held the fruits. So that basically was the effect that we achieved last time. And as you have noticed that as we increase the, uh, the length of the list, the area that was occupied uh, by the division also increased. However, the paragraph that is to the right of this list is very close to the list. And if I would like to expand the list a little bit more, one of the properties that I could use on the division is I can basically use a width property and I can say, well, I would like this particular division to span 300 pixels. So as a result of doing this, as now you will going to see that it actually increases in width like that. If I want to further decrease it, let's say to 150 pixels, I can change the value to 150 pixels and here you go. You can see that <clears throat> the width is a little bit more than what it was originally. However, the paragraph, fruits come in various colors, shapes, and sizes, is still very close to the division. So one of the properties that I can use with division is I can apply a property called margin. The margin property will going to leave some area around in the surrounding of that orange box. So if I would like to use a margin property and I say, well, I would like to leave a margin of 15 pixels on all four sides. Then as a result of this, you will going to notice that the, you notice how the paragraph of uh, fruits come in various colors and shapes moved a little bit to the right, leaving some space around. However, if you also notice, there is an extra space right above the paragraph as well because of that 15 pixels margin spacing. And margin spacing can also be done in one particular area or like, for example, if I would like to give only the right margin. So if I say I would only like the right margin to be 15 pixels. And as you can see here, the difference that I'm going to make, all the other margins are still in place the way they were. Only the right margin was maintained at that distance. So I could also do margin right or margin top or margin bottom, margin left. I can individually tackle that as well. And also notice within the box, there is also some space left. Now, what you see the space on the left is because of uh, the bullets. That's why uh, that space is occurring because by default, all the bullets are indented inwards. But if you notice, there isn't much space left at the top and at the bottom. So if I would like to expand the orange region, however, leaving some space on the top and the bottom, then we have another property called padding. The padding property is used for inside region. The margin property is used for the outside region. So if I would like to apply the padding property here, so if I just generically say padding equals uh, 10 pixels, now that will going to apply the padding in all four directions. If I increase that number to, oops, sorry, to 10 pixels so that you can actually see, you can notice that it actually applies the padding in all four directions. So if I would like to control that, I can actually control that uh, with a value of left padding, right padding. That's basically what we're going to explore next. Now, if I increase the value of padding to 50 pixels, that will going to only apply the padding. Um, to the surrounding area of orange box. The reason is because the orange box actually starts at the UL level. If orange box would have started at the division level, then you will be able to see the orange area. Now notice how 50 pixels is being applied outside of the orange box. So I can basically apply that within the orange box, but, but for that I would have to apply the properties at the UL level. So I may have to add those properties under the ID call list. So now what I would like to do is I would like to remove the padding property from the division and I would like to rather go under fruits.css and uh, let me concentrate on the list ID and I would like to introduce the padding property over here that I would like the padding top to be 10 pixels and I would like the padding bottom to be 
10 pixels as well. So those are the two properties that I would like to change in terms of padding. And now you will only going to see the padding in the orange region. You will see a 10 pixels of space right above and right underneath, but the left and the right padding will going to stay the same the way it was. So I can basically now go and run on the browser. Oh. The, I'll just refresh this page. And as you can see, a little bit of a space has been generated above and below this particular region that is the UL. So that's what padding can do um, to give that region a space. Now we have a generic property of a padding as well. And see, we have a generic property for a margin as well. However, when you are using a generic value for padding, let's say if I just use the generic value for padding, then I have to remember that how the padding property works. Padding property always works in a clockwise fashion. What does that mean? That the first, it, it basically allows you to give four values separated by space. And the first value represents top, the second value represents right, the third value represents bottom, and the last value represents left. So if I would not like to apply any indentation to the left, so I'm going to leave it to be the zero pixels. However, we have to remember that when you are applying the CSS properties at the user level, it supersedes the CSS properties at the browser level. So if I use zero pixels for the left padding, if you notice currently, my uh, bullet items are indented inwards. So if I set the padding to zero pixels, it will actually going to throw that region outside. So let me show you what exactly I mean by that. So if I have top region as 10 pixels, I want the red padding, the right padding to be zero pixels. I want the bottom padding to be 10 pixels and I want the left to be zero pixels. So if I refresh this page now, notice that what basically that will going to do um, in terms of displaying the list, it will going to throw away, so we're going to start the bullet from the zero pixels. And as you can see over here, the bullets are not even showing up because now they're outside of the page. So in order to make the bullets appear a little bit better, I may have to use a larger number. For example, if I use 30 pixels instead of zero pixels, if I now refresh my page, now you can see that they have maintained a little bit of a padding distance from the left side of the box. So you have to be careful when you're dealing with these properties to choose the right set of properties. Just like I can apply the four values and they go in a clockwise fashion for padding, similarly I can apply the four values I'm going to go in clockwise fashion for margin. So I don't have to always deal with margin right, margin top. I only utilize those if I am only working on one particular margin. Besides that, you can be giving the, uh, the margin area um, or, or, the, or the region uh, some kind of a borders to work with. For example, if I would like my list attribute to actually display a border, and I would like it to have um, a, a border, I can basically say I would like the border style Uh, border width property. This is what I'm going to like to work, work first, and then I'm going to make my way through uh, the other property, the border style. So now I have decided to give the border width a value of 10 pixels. I would now like to use a border style. Border style has several different values to choose from. In fact, in CSS, you can have eight different kind of border styles that range from solid to dashed to dotted to double, outset inset, groove, and ridge. There are several different variations that you can work with. So if I would like to use double for now, and I'm going to make a, some changes as we progress through this example. So I would like my border style to be double, and it will automatically going to take the default color for the list, which is red, and we're going to apply that to be the border color. So if I would like to go back to my page and refresh this page, and here you can see as I scroll down that is applied the double border around this region. If I now make some changes and, um, and change my border style to solid and, and refresh the page, 
you will notice that now it will going to display a solid border color. So by default, it is staying the color. It is taking the color red to apply for the border of the region. But if I can apply the border color, I can literally um, change that to whatever color I may I want to use. So border color will then going to supersede the color property, which is the text property, because that's the closest property to the border. So as you can see, the border color has now changed to white. So I can apply all of these properties. I don't want to apply the background, the, the border color. I can simply comment out this property just so that you know that property can also be applied. Now, besides that, I could also apply uh, the borders in certain regions only. For example, if I want to only apply the top border, then I can use border top style. Or if I would like to use only um, the top and the bottom, then I can also use border bottom style along with border top style. And that will allow, allow me uh, to give different borders to different regions. So I don't have to use one generic property. So let's say, uh, let me put this in the comment region as well uh, so that you, know, you, can, you can see this property over here and then we're gonna expand on top of that. So if I apply border, top style and I give that a property a value of solid and similarly if I have border bottom style I can give that a value of solid so now I'm only applying the top and the bottom um, borders so I'll just go and refresh and you can see since I commented out the white color for the border it goes to the default which is red and you can see that it only applies to top border and it applies to bottom border. And so those are the only borders that it applies. So this is how you can play around with these properties and make your pages appear uh, more and more beautiful and better. And then you can apply some of the other properties or you can have more than one regions floating around. In fact, what we'd like to do is we would like to, in our next tutorial, explore how you can break the sequence of floating around. And then we're also going to introduce one more floating region of links and work around with a little bit more properties. Well, that's all for now. Catch you guys soon. Thank you for watching another tutorial.